I ran up the stairs, made a corner, and coming to me was a student, and I recognized him right away. I saw he had a gun in his hand. And we, we had both been running so quickly that we just passed each other in a very narrow hallway, probably an eight-foot wide hallway, eight to ten, maybe ten feet wide. And I think out of just a reaction, he, he just, as he ran by me, he brought the gun up and fired. But he hit me and knocked me down. I was on the ground, and um, I couldn't get up. I can remember, you know, I could not get up off the floor. And I think the first shot that he fired was just a reaction that there was somebody in his way, and he was trying to run out of the building as fast as he could. And um, so the first one was probably a reaction. But then he stopped, and he was probably from me to you. And I can remember looking at him, and he just you know, took aim and fired a second shot. In 1986, then assistant principal John Moffat of Fergus High School in Lewistown, Montana, was shot by 14-year-old student Christopher Hans. Hans planned to shoot his French teacher after a dispute with his parents over his grade in class, which he had to improve or he would be sent to live with his father in Wyoming. However, upon entering the classroom, Hans shot and killed substitute teacher Henrietta Smith. I don't think anybody really gave much consideration to the idea that something, you know, like a shooting could happen at school. What well, just wasn't on the radar at that time, I don't think. <laughs> I know that after a, an incident like Sandy Hook, it's hard not to be frightened. And it should be a wake-up call for us. I think if we're ever going to make an impact on school safety, it has to be with the idea that we're going to look at the whole big picture. And that's not in the least to say that I would favor taking away everybody's guns, uh, you know, making hunting illegal or anything like that. Absolutely not. I think we just need some common sense. And some of those proactive, preventive measures. And that's just what the Missoula County Public School District is trying to do. As a direct result of the Newtown shootings, MCPS has implemented active resistance training, a program that aims to help teachers and district officials learn skills to protect their classroom and students, especially in the zero to four minutes it takes for police to respond. Safety and security officer for MCPS, Mark Putty, explains the current run-lock-fight model that has been adopted by the district. And what we found out was, was that we can lock a building down and we can have access control to people, but when uh, seconds count, the police are just minutes away. Um, we really needed to address that aspect of it. So we brought uh, Safari Lane Training Group to instruct um, or to have instructors within the school district or within the law enforcement agencies to bring training to individuals to teach them how to respond specifically to an active threat or an armed intruder inside their workplace. Teaches individuals three basic things. You run, evacuate, or lock down, barricade inside a room, or fight as a last resort. Safari Land Training is a professional law enforcement organization that teaches law enforcement officers nationwide how to respond to an active shooter. The Safari Land Group trained a cadre of Missoula law enforcement and security officials who in turn are teaching teachers to protect their students and themselves in the event of an armed intruder. So it's the same concepts that law enforcement is being taught we're now transferring it to the civilian world. And I think that's the precept of our success with this program is that we give everybody that exposure where other programs may only be one aspect of it. We want to make sure that we're doing proactive measures to make sure that if something does occur, we have the skills and ability to be able to increase our survivability. Right now, you can go into most of our schools. Anybody can walk in, and you can be in the hallway in a matter of seconds, and then you're in a classroom. So we have to be cognizant of that. And that's why this training is so important, is because our schools right now have not been constructed, really, on the basis of safety and security. Whatever it takes to train our staff and to build safe schools, that's a responsibility that we have. MCPS Superintendent Alex Apostle has made safety and security a priority in the district while making bonds with the Missoula Police Department.
His district-wide goal is to train every faculty and staff member with the active resistance training. Because it's not just one person's problem or one department's issue, it's a, it's a community as a whole. And if we can come together um, to confront this issue that would seem to be on an increase, then I think that we're better off. In fall of 2014, MCPS offered the active resistance training to teachers across the state of Montana. Inspired by what they learned, several teachers wished to see the same type of training in their home districts. It's a shift of philosophy for us to actually take action and not just hide. So I was interested in what that, the action would, what it would be. This is a great training. The, the trainers in this uh, program are well prepared and well versed in what they're doing and it's a very good program. I think everybody in the state of Montana that teaches and actually anybody that teaches or works in a big building should be exposed to this kind of training. For Putty, educating teachers with active resistance training is not about being paranoid, it's being prepared. And it's teaching people to survive rather than hide. Hiding and hoping is not an option because as we know from case studies that when you hide under a table you hide somewhere and don't do anything proactive to deny that person access to you, usually that ends up being somebody uh, killed or, or injured, seriously. Um, the survivor mentality is that I'm going to do everything that I can to prevent this individual from hurting me, my staff, and my children. For John Moffat, the events of 1986 have never left him and are a daily reminder of the very real threats in our schools on a daily basis. After being tried as an adult and sentenced to 240 years in prison, Hans was eventually granted parole, and Moffat has come to the point in his life where he can offer Hans his forgiveness. I wasn't going to live my life, you know, uh, letting him control uh, and, and keeping me angry and, you know, just... Uh, felt I had to, you know, for my own sake, for my family, I felt it was time to forgive. Moffat believes the strategies MCPS is implementing are a step in the right direction and a cause he is willing to support. Reporting for the PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs from Sentinel High School, I'm Marty Lichty.